The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is again our Old Testament reading for this past Sunday, the third Sunday after the Epiphany. Again, the Epiphany, the day the wise men came to worship the infant Jesus, the day we celebrate that. That was January the 6th again. But we're looking at the Old Testament reading for this past Sunday, and that's from Isaiah 61. We're looking at verses 1 to 6 today, especially the last three verses, where Jesus said, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Aliens will shepherd your flocks. Foreigners will work your fields and vineyards. And you will be called priests of the Lord. You will be named ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of nations and in their riches you will boast. My dear friends in Christ, when God finally after 70 years worked the release of the Jews from their captivity in Babylon, the Jews, a small remnant of them, returned to Palestine and, and they rebuilt Jerusalem and the, and the temple. Our reading says, Jesus says, they will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that had been devastated for generations. When they did their rebuild, there were some people, some older people in the land who had been there and had seen Solomon's temple before it was destroyed. And, well, they saw this new temple that the people had rebuilt. And, and it was a beautiful, it was a magnificent structure, but it just wasn't the structure that Solomon had originally built. And, well, that just tells us here plainly that when Jesus is talking about rebuilding the ancient ruins, well, that rebuilding the temple is only a partial fulfillment of what Jesus is really talking about. What Jesus is really talking about, the real fulfillment of this section, is not talking about a physical building. It's talking about building up the body of Christ building up the church of Christ that consists of all true believers. Now Christ has done his work. He lived and died for us. He paid for all of our sins. And now what Christ wants us to do as we look at this section here is he's telling us that he wants us to do our work. He wants us to be his witnesses to go and make disciples of all nations. Jesus wants us to consider what amazing service we can give to God, to our God. And well, when we share the gospel message with someone who doesn't believe in Jesus, or when we share that same message with someone who is especially troubled by his sins, well, then the Holy Spirit can work and he can do some amazing things through us to rebuild the ancient ruins of that person's, of that person's soul. The Holy Spirit can work to, to comfort the troubled sinners 
the troubled sinner. He can make believers out of people whose ancestors for generations had never known about Jesus. Our Savior said, Aliens will shepherd your flocks. Foreigners will work your fields and vineyards. When Jesus came into this world to be our Savior, the tragic thing that happened is that most of the Jews, most of his people, they ended up rejecting him. And because they ended up rejecting him, there still were some believers in the land, of course, but because most of them rejected Jesus, now what is the case is our Lord's work is largely done by Gentiles, by those that the Jews would have considered, as he says here, foreigns and alien, aliens. We Gentiles today are blessed with that wonderful privilege of doing our Lord's work today. And he says to us, Jesus says to us, and you will be called priests of the Lord. You will be named ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of nations and in their riches you will boast. What Christ wants is he wants all of us who by God's grace believe in him, he wants us to be involved in his work. He wants us to use, as he says here, the wealth and riches of the nations, the wealth and the riches that he's given to us. He wants us to use those things to support the spread of the gospel. So remember, Christ has done his work. Now it's time for us to do our work. And of course, that's work we can only do with his help. It's not something we can do on our own. But when we think about the work that he calls us to do, well, what we can say is what amazing service we can give to God. And that's because God is at work in us. That's why we can do amazing things for God. In our epistle reading for this past Sunday, well, the Apostle Paul told us that God wants all of us to be faithfully using the talents and abilities that he's given us to serve him in his kingdom so that more souls are reached with the gospel, so that we're all being built up in our faith in Jesus the Savior. Well, Paul said, now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good so that we're built up, so that more people are brought into God's believing family. Oh, a story I've often told is that of, oh, there was a southern battlefield where a soldier had an artery in his arm severely lacerated and, and he was literally bleeding to death. But as he was Leading to death, a physician happened to come by and was able to take care of him and bind up that artery so that his life was saved. And as that physician was leaving, the formerly dying soldier cried out, Doctor, what is your name? And the doctor said, Oh, just don't worry about that. And the man replied, but doctor, I want to tell my wife and children who saved me. And now what we need to recognize is that what Christ has done for us is so much more than what that doctor did for that dying, formerly dying soldier. He bound up our wounds. He gave us the forgiveness of sins. He saved our spiritual life. He saved us from eternal death. Our Savior did everything for us. But what amazing service we now can give to our God when we share Jesus with everyone around us. May we, like that soldier, have this amazing burning desire to tell others about Jesus, 
our great physician, how he has bound up our broken hearts, our dying hearts, made us alive in Christ, and given us this wonderful privilege, this wonderful privilege to serve our Savior. What amazing service we can give to our God because of what he has done for us. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, help us to always treasure what an amazing turnaround you have accomplished in our lives. We once were lost, but now have been found. We were blind, but now we see. Now, what amazing strength we have in Jesus. We can, with Jesus, fight the good fight of faith. We can, with Jesus, share Jesus with the people around us. And what amazing service we can give to our God as we share Jesus with the world. Thank you for sending Jesus to live and die for us and pay for all our sins, and for sending us the Holy Spirit working through the Word of God so we believe in what Jesus has done to turn our lives around. Help us now to use the strength you give us to fight the good fight of faith and to do everything we can to share Jesus with the world. We pray in his name. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you always.